Minecraft is a cultural touchstone and was monumental in gaming becoming a tab on YouTube. This was due to a load of people creating fun and engaging content that enticed viewers to play the game for themselves and raked in millions of views on YouTube and other sites. But today, I want to talk specifically about one group who were the original Minecraft YouTubers that inspired what we see today with SMPs. The Yachtscast, or Blue Zephos, was the first channel in the UK to reach a million subscribers, and it was in big part due to their massive success with their Shadow of Israfel series. I was a huge fan of the series and used to watch episodes as they came out. These guys are what made Minecraft fun for me and gave me a lifelong passion of creating stories. But one day, they stopped uploading the next episode, and I got older. A couple years ago, a friend had reintroduced me back into Minecraft, and the Dream SMP was really popular at the time. I couldn't stop seeing the parallels to what I saw as a kid happening again. It made me so happy that other people were falling in love with this game, so I think it's only fair that people know the origins of SMP culture. I'm really obsessed with finding out how things came to be, so let me introduce you to my favorite YouTubers from when I was a teen. A new server, and we're gonna show people how to play Minecraft, how to survive the first night. Oh Beautiful. my god, it's terribly snowy. What on earth happened here? So in order to write the script for this, I marathoned the whole series, and let me say, it's still so funny to this day. And if you are interested in learning more about why storytelling works, I have a video in which I break down storytelling and more to come. But let's get into it. The Yogscasts, or originally Blue Zephos, were a group of friends in a WoW guild together that was titled The Old Goon Squad, which is where the name Yogscast comes from. The channel was originally about making fun WoW boss tutorials, and has evolved over the past years into gameplay and game reviews as well. The Yogscasts were not the only first people to play Minecraft and try to do a tutorial. Many other people like Paul Soros Jr. and CNNers, yes, that CNNers, did you know he introduced Captain Sparkles to Minecraft? Anyways, what stood out about their tutorial was that they weren't good at the game. So slowly this tutorial changed from focusing on teaching you how to survive in Minecraft to a full-blown story. But you as a viewer didn't know this was happening until much later. Yeah. Look, we're out, we don't have much room. So this is our house, okay. What about all these poor sheep go, and cows and things? Come in, Are quick. they not Come in. scared of the- Oh, you've made a door. Come in, quick. Okay. <laughs> Close the door! Close the goddamn door! There we are. <laughs> there we, go. we haven't actually got a roof, but we do have a tree over us, or some leaves. Oh god. Um, oh god. Uh... <laughs> so this is it, this is the game. <laughs> this is Minecraft. Is surviving the first <laughs> So before they started calling the series Shadow of Israel, it was just called How to Survive the First Night. Let's start there. Warning, major spoilers ahead. I would recommend watching the Shadow of Israfil series on your own time, and the playlist I like is linked down below. With that being said, it is about 22 hours long and ends on a cliffhanger, so I intend for this video to be a summary and explanation to save you some time. Also, if you don't want to watch the whole thing summarized, you can jump to the time step if you want to just learn why they stopped the series. Without further ado, let's learn how to survive the first night. The first episode starts off by giving you the worst way to survive the night by making a shack as monsters surround it, and introducing us to the main people behind the Yogscast, Lewis, whose skin is Riker from Star Trek at the moment, and Simon, whose skin is a dwarf. With the next episodes, they started gathering resources and commented on how the world was changing, but they are the only ones on the server. In episode 7, they see a pyramid with rudimentary parkour. They both fail at it spectacularly and do not get the treasure at the back. But it's at this time that I need to explain something. So moving forward, things are going to happen in the world like an RPG. But I want you to know that we as a viewer totally believed there were hackers or stalkers or NPCs for a long time. You see, Minecraft was in its very early stages, so anything was possible. And the idea that the people they met were just other players was not something anyone thought of. Their improv with little bits of scripted parts worked so well that we had no clue they were probably making their own traps. It worked because we usually were through Simon's perspective for the big lore reveals, since he was not involved in the building or planning to give an authentic reaction. It's really smart to have one person know what's going on enough for where they need to go and then someone who has no clue. Now with the pyramid puzzle, they were starting to suspect someone else was on the server. And honestly, old Minecraft makes that feel way more creepy. Imagine, you had a stalker who was waiting till you were offline to mess around with your builds. Anyways, 
They try to ignore it and keep building on their first house, the Ugg Cave. But everything comes to a head when they are greeted by Israfel. He attacks them and they chase him down to a town where a bunch of other people live. It was crazy seeing a town with people when villagers weren't even a thing yet. We really believed it, and honestly, it's still kind of impressive to have a whole team of friends building and acting it out on a server. In the village, they are greeted by Old Peculiar, an inn owner, and his daughter Daisy, who Simon falls in love with. Through breaking into places and learning stories, they learn that the Reverend's son is Israfel, and he was brought back from the dead through some kind of ritual. As they go to confront the Reverend, they find a secret basin, where they try to fight his henchmen as Israfel escapes with Daisy. They vow to Old Peculiar that they will go after Israfel to get her back, and that's the end of the first act. Now, in between episodes, the Oscast was still making content. Their content had shifted to Minecraft mod reviews and adventure map playthroughs, creating fun characters such as Professor Griswold. I think he's dead. No. This is terrible news. R.I.P. It appears I am died! <laughs> Writing this note from beyond the grave. <laughs> if you receive it, I'm going to haunt you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> After episode 27, they decided to take a break from their Minecraft server and survive an adventure map focused on surviving on an island. In the meantime, Simon thought we should play some custom maps that we found on the forums. Hello, Lewis. So, what what are we doing here on this this deserted island, Simon? We're playing a special version of Minecraft. Someone has created a map. A man by the name of Ashian. Well, it's probably a boy. A boy by the name of Ashian on the internet <laughs> has created this map. It's called Survival Island. Um, we are stuck on an island. We're not allowed to leave the island. Behind the scenes, they decided to do this while nether portals, a new thing added to Minecraft, were being fixed. It plays out like a pretty standard Minecraft playthrough until Simon starts noticing something in the sky. It's revealed in the last episode that Old Peculiar and another man named Skylord Lysander have come to rescue them from the island, so they can continue their search to find Daisy and defeat Israfel. End of Act 2. Now the series has been officially named, and there has been an update to the videos. This was so impressive at the time, I want you to know they filmed this in Minecraft with green wool blocks to keyframe them f into a flying scene. Like, that's crazy. Now the real hero's journey begins. Okay, so a little of a side tangent, but their last season is clocked full of storytelling and there is no summaries of it online. On the wiki, all they do is link the episodes? Like, what the fuck? Anyways, let me summarize it for you. I'm gonna do my best and not try to miss anything. Sorry if I do. Comment down below anything I missed. So, our heroes are back at the Yog Cave to find that it is destroyed and filled with sand. Pay attention, sand and the portals are symbols of Israfel's corruption. Old Peculiar is sick and they need to go to Mistral City in order to have him healed. They also learn that Skylord Lysander is a part of the ruling council of Mistral City and the Skylords operate zeppelins. When they arrive at the Yog Cave, they destroyed his current zeppelin which poses a problem, so they have to walk to Mistral City. When they arrive, they see a city full of zeppelins and floating islands. Simon meets a woman named Granny Bacon, who he immediately falls in love with. They also meet Fumblemore, a weird old wizard who helps restore Peculiar to full health after collecting supplies. Eventually, he is so youthful, he becomes Knight Peculiar, but that's later. And they also learn that the Cult of Israfel is in an abandoned mine near town, and they have captured Granny Bacon. They fight their way into the cave and are tricked when Granny Bacon reveals that she is a bloodthirsty zombie the whole time, and Simon is forced to kill her. They chase after Israfel and the crew and are led to Skull's Pass, which leads them to a carnival. Simon competes against strongman Bruno, and Madden Nebeski reveals their great future. After this, they travel to Varigan's Hold, where the Templars are defending against the impending sand and corruption. Templar Adafin gives them a tour, and they learn that a hundred years ago there was a summer that never ended and the water dried up. Varigan led a group of people to fight back against the sands, and they were able to draw it out and put up a border. They killed the monster also out in the sands, and it became buried with time. Varigan was killed during the battle, and his son Carpath founded the Crimson Cross and established the Templars. 
Of course, Israel fights back against the heroes, and they are only able to barely stop the spread of sand. They learn that while fighting the breach, Mistral City is in ruins, and they must find a map to the beast in the sands, but it is broken into pieces. They find a map fragment on Reverend John's body in Mistral, and through Swampy and Templar Dafin, they find out that the map is scattered throughout the land. While exploring at the carnival, they find a secret passage to Barbecue Bay, a pirate's land. They arrive, and multiple pirates are shooting at each other. They side with Jock Fireblast and defeat Grimjaw, and meet Spacker as well. They also meet Isabel Peculiar, who is also looking for Grimjaw's treasure, which may have the map fragment. They face Grimdraw's trials, and when they get to the end, they learn Jock betrayed them and got the treasure first. They confront Jock, and he says Israel betrayed them, but his submarine leads to another nether portal, tying him to Israel. When they go through the portal, they are in a lab in the nether, and then they go back to Barbecue Bay to confront Jock. They get back to as Jock is burning Barbecue Bay down and confesses that he burnt Mistral City to the ground as well. Isabel helps them escape, and they get the map fragment. It is through this that Varigan starts communicating with the heroes and shows them the grave future if they do not fight back. After escaping by Barbecue Bay, Spacker leads them towards Stoneholm, and they hole up in a mansion for the night. This is where they meet Skylar Jasper, where it is implied that he is in a gay relationship with Skylar Lysander. After hearing the grave news of Varigan's hold... Skylord Lysander says they need to let the Skylords know immediately, so they build planes and go up towards the Skyhold. They are met by Skylord Vitali, who, f- who informs them that all the other Skylords are either dead or vanished. They then meet a dying Skylord, who tells them that if they complete the trials to become Skylords themselves, they can get into the control room and take back Skyhold. The heroes do the test in the skies in order to get into the control room, but in the middle of the test they find out Skylord Vitali is in fact evil and a vampire who has been killing off the Skylords. They kill him and then finish the test getting into the control room, and they soon find out that Sky's hold is actually movable and can be flown. And deep inside the controls, they find the third map fragment. After this, they resume their travels to Stoneholm with Spacker. Stoneholm is a town of dwarfs that are being turned into zombies. They learn that the last map fragment could be in the Deep Core since it was built around the time of Vergen being in the city. They fight their way past massive zombies and ride minecarts to the surface towards the Spire. The Spire is one of the things keeping the Sand God chained under the sand that Israel is trying to destroy. They find the last map piece there and it will lead them to the Sand God for the heroes to defeat it. They come back to the carnival and find it filled with sand, so they go over the wall and set out to find the sand monster. Where the map leads them is a hand coming out of the sand. They start digging around it and find a lab with doppelganger technology and lose Night Peculiar just as they escape the lab. Traveling through the desert, they meet up with Swampy, who has made a small oasis, and that's it. They never uploaded episode 43, and fans were stunned. The Oscast continued with other Minecraft and gaming, but for many years refused to talk about Shadow of Israfil, and so it was last to time. But fear not. A couple years ago, we finally got an answer to what happened. So due to high budgets and waiting forever for animations, the team grew bored and moved on to other things. Still, I think this is an important moment for Minecraft and YouTube gaming in general. The Oxcast inspired tons of Minecraft content creators, including Stampy. They also had millions of people watching the series each episode at a time when YouTube was still really small. They pioneered storytelling in Minecraft by showing it had limitless potential and changed gaming videos from being about solely tutorials to being about fun skits and stories. It's hard to say if content would still be the same today without Shadow of Israfel, but it is undeniable of its correlation with YouTube creating a gaming tab and helping to grow Twitch very early on. But one thing's for certain, it inspired me and helped millions of people find Minecraft, and I think that's pretty special. Thank you so much for watching. I upload YouTube videos bi-weekly, and they focus around primarily Minecraft, but also video essays in general about gaming. Also, if you ever want to see me play games live, I'm live on Twitch three times a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I hope to see you there.